Right, today we're going to look at some more difficult indices questions. And for these questions, we're going to need to use everything we know about multiplying and dividing indices. Now, this is what you should know already. So when we're multiplying indices, we add the powers. When we're dividing indices, we subtract the powers. When you have brackets, we multiply the powers. Then we should know anything to the power of 0 equals 1. When we have a negative indice, the negative means a fraction. So 1 over, and then just a to the power of n. And then if we have a fractional indice like this over here, then we do the mth root, and then we apply a power of n outside a bracket. And then when it's a minus, then again we just put it as a fraction, so 1 over. So, we should know all these rules, and for the questions that we're going to go through now, you will need to know all of these. Now, for the first one, we're just starting very simply. We're multiplying indices here, so when we multiply, all we do is add our indices. So, this is going to equal a to the power of 2 plus a quarter. Okay, so 2 plus a quarter is just 2 and a quarter. And then if we, if we write that as an improper fraction, then we're going to get a to the power of, and then we do 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9 over 4. Okay, so that's the first one. Now the second one, when we're dividing indices, if you have a look, we need to minus them. Okay, so we're going to have e, and then minus 4 minus 6. Okay, minus 4 minus 6 just gives us minus 10. So that's going to be e to the power of minus 10. Now looking at number 3, we have 3x squared in brackets, and then we have a cube outside the brackets. Now what this means is we need to cube everything inside the bracket. So we can break this down into 3 cubed, and then we have x squared, and we're cubing that as well. Okay? So, what we're going to get is 3 cubed, which is 27. And now, when we have indices like this in brackets, just like up here, we multiply the powers. So, we're going to have x to the power of 2 times by 3. So, if we simplify that, that just gives us 27x to the power of 6. Looking at number 4... Straight away, when we see this negative, what we should do is write 1 over, okay? So change it to a fraction. So it's going to be 1 over, and then 2 q cubed and squared, okay? So that's what we have here. So all I've done is just rewrote it using this minus power, because the minus power means 1 over. Now, let's sort out the bottom of this fraction. So down here, we're just going to square everything inside the brackets. So that's going to be 2 squared, and then q cubed squared. Okay? So let's be careful here. We're going to have 1 over, and then 2 squared, which is just 4. And now, again, we have indices and brackets here, so we need to multiply them. So that's going to be q to the power of 6. Now, for number 5, we need to work out what's in this bracket first. So, we have a division, which means we're going to subtract the powers. So, this is going to be C, and then we're going to do 10 minus 2. That's inside our brackets, and we have this quarter, which is outside. So, C to the 10 minus 2 is just C to the power of 8, and we still have the quarter outside. Now, when we have indices with brackets like this, we have to multiply the powers, which means we're going to do C, and then we're going to have 8 times by 1 quarter. So that equals C, and then 8 over 4, and 8 divided by 4 is just 2. So our final answer is just C squared. Now, looking at number 6, we have 9p to the power of 4 divided by 4y squared. Now, we can't simplify any of this inside the brackets. So, what we have to do is just use this half out here. Now, 
when you have a half, that means we're going to square root everything, okay? So if you have a look down here, we just have a 1 on the top, so this is just a 1, which means just the power of 1, which is just nothing, and we have a 2 here as m, okay? And the 2 means we're going to square root everything. So that means we're going to do the square root of 9, and then we're going to do the square root of p to the power of 4, and then on the bottom we're going to do the square root of 4, and then the square root of y squared. Now, the square root of 9 is just 3, and now the square root of p to the power of 4. So we can just rewrite this as p to the power of 4 times by a half, okay? Because that's the same as a square root. So I've just taken this and times it over here. And then on the bottom, the square root of 4, that's just 2. And then I'm going to do the same thing, y squared to the power of a half. Now, for the final step, when we have these indices again in brackets, what we're doing is multiplying them, okay? So on the top, we're going to have 3, and then p to the power of 4 times by a half. So 4 times by a half equals 4 over 2, and that just equals 2. So we're going to have p to the power of 2 on the top, and on the bottom now we have y, and then we have 2 times by a half, which is just going to give us 1. So that's going to be 2y on the bottom, so that's our answer there. Now, number 7, it's another easy one, we're just dividing. So when we divide, again, we just have to minus our powers, so we're going to have q, and then we're going to have a quarter minus a half. Now, a quarter minus a half, if we were to change these both to quarters, that would be q, and then a quarter minus, and then if I change the second one to a 2, I have to times the top by 2. So that's what it is there, q, and then we have a quarter minus two quarters, okay, that's the same as a quarter minus a half, and that gives us an answer of minus one quarter. So our answer is q to the power of minus a quarter. Now for number eight, it's a little bit more tricky, we need to take this step by step. So we can keep this two to the power of four just as it is. Now, this over here, we have 1 over the cube root of 2. Now, whenever we have 1 over, that means it's a minus power. Okay, So we've got a power of minus something. And now it's the cube root. So the cube root of something is a third. So we can rewrite this whole fraction here as this over here. 2 to the power of minus a third. And then times this by 2 to the power of minus a half. Now if we have a look, they are all multiplications, so we're going to add all of these indices together. So we're going to have 2, and then 4, and then minus a third, and then minus a half, okay? Because if we do 4 plus minus a, a third, that's the same as just 4 minus a third, okay? And it's the same for this one over here. Now. 4 minus a third and minus a half. So to minus all of these numbers, 4 minus a third and minus a half. 4 as a fraction is 4 over 1. Now we need to be able to minus all of these fractions, so they need to have the same denominator. Now we can change all of these denominators to something out of 6. So for the first fraction, to change 1 to 6, I have to times by 6. So I'll do the same to the top. 4 times by 6 is 24. So 24 there. And now 3 times 2 gives me 6. So I do the same to the top. So that's going to be 2. And then I times 2 by 3 to get 6. So on the top, I'll just have 3 here. So I have 24 sixth minus 2 sixth. That's going to give me 22 sixth. And then minus 3 from that, that's going to give me 19 sixths. So my answer here now is just going to be 2 to the power of 19 over 6.
So be careful, your fraction work needs to be very good there, okay? So you need to be able to minus these fractions up here. And to do so, make sure you have a common denominator. Now, moving on to number 9. We start with the top of the fraction, which just stays as x to the power of 4. And then looking at the bottom, this here is a cube root. Now, when we are cube rooting something, we can rewrite it as the power of 1 third, just like that. So now, we will keep the x to the 4 on the top. The cube root of 8, okay, because that's what the third means, so we're going to cube root 8. And then we're going to times x just by a third, so that's what we have there. And now the cube root of 8 is 2, and x to the power of 1 third just stays as x to the power of 1 third. And now what we can do is bring the x's together, because this in the middle is a divide. Now, x to the power of 4 divided by x to the power of a third means all we're going to do is do x to the power of 4 minus 1 third. Okay, because when we divide, we need to subtract the powers, okay, just like it says up here. And so if we do 4 minus a third, then what we're going to get is x to the power of 3 and 2 thirds. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11. So x to the power of 11 over 3. So our answer here is going to be x to the power of 11 over 3. And let's not forget we have this 2 on the bottom of the fraction, so we just divide it by 2. Now, the last example I'm going to do is this one over here. So we have a fraction this time, and a fractional indice as well. So, for a starter, all I'm going to do is just rewrite this. So on the top, n to the power of 5, and then we're applying a power of 3 over 2, and then we do the same to the bottom, 100 to the power of 3 over 2. Now, we can simplify the top straight away, because when we have indices like this, when we have brackets, we just multiply the powers. Okay, So, what we have to do there is n to the power of 5 times by 3 over 2. And on the bottom, we still have 100 to the power of 3 over 2. Now, 5 times by 3 over 2, we do 5 times 3, which is 15, and just divide it by 2. So this simplifies down to n to the power of 15 over 2, divided by... Now, this 2 means we're going to square root 100, okay? So be careful, have a look here. The m means what we are square rooting it by. So that's going to be the square root of 100. And now the 3 on the top of the fraction, if we have a look, means we're applying a power of 3 outside of the brackets. So on the top, it stays the same, n to the power of 15 over 2. Divided by, now the root of 100 is 10. And now this is cubed. So our answer is going to be n to the power of 15 over 2. Divided by 10 cubed, which is 10 times 10 times 10, which gives us 1,000. Okay, so that's our answer for that one. So now it's your go. So here are nine questions for you to practice. So have a go at these, and remember these are the index laws you're going to need to use to solve these. So have a go at those nine questions, and I'm going to put the answers up in the next video, which will be titled as it is down here. So thanks for watching, good luck with all your maths, and I'll see you again soon.